This is not the Olympic swim trials, but let's dive in anyway. Our conversations about how bad wildfires could be this coming summer often focuses on last year's record setting fires in Colorado, which sort of misses the point. This is not a one or two year thing that is coming our way. Here's Anusha Roy. South Metro Fire is worried our lush green surroundings have lulled some of us into a false sense of security. I actually think that our guards are down right now. Firefighters are preparing for round two after last year's gigantic fires. We are preparing for a very intense wildfire season, but we never know. Colorado weather is very dynamic. It's more than our quick changing weather and just our state. It's the long term changes. The National Center for Atmospheric Research meteorologist Jeff Weber is weighing in on. Summer months will be hotter than normal and drier than normal. The comparisons are from over the last 30 years. And then with that persistent dryness, there's been a mega drought in the Western United States for the past 20 years. You've probably put two and two together by now. Between the rain followed by the heat, there is a lot of fuel that can combust and our forests are ripe for catching fire. I would say for this year's fire season, I would expect a similar season as to what we had last year. Which even for fire experts like Weber was intense and too close to home. These are his own photos from last year. He took people in who evacuated, watched a wall of smoke approach homes, and as scary as that was, Weber is thinking big picture, including a persistent ridge over the western United States that he says continues to dry and warm that part of the country. Our forests are trying to adapt. Change in how the ecosystem may develop over the next decade to adapt to what we're looking at as far as future climate. And so we may see fewer pines in Colorado that may be replaced more by aspen and other types of um, bushes and shrubs. So you might see aspens first because they tend to grow more quickly in open spaces uh, like when a fire goes through a forest and then you see the pines further down the road years later and that's just kind of naturally how things work in a forest which is just a very much Reader's Digest version of how all of that works. But Kyle, you know, my main takeaway from today was that this is not just about looking at the short term, right, which is protecting your homes, being smart when you're out in public, but also really paying attention to what happens to our land landscape over the next 10, 20, 30 years. You know, Anusha, and I think every year people try to figure out what area of Colorado is most at risk. I remember, you know, five to 10 years ago, everybody was talking beetle kill, and then all of a sudden you had a fire burn inside the city limits of Colorado Springs, and you had a fire in Black Forest. And then everybody was worried about Western Colorado being so dry last year, and it was Northern yeah. Colorado that was burning, even into the fall. What do we think about what areas are most at risk in this season to come? Yeah, you know, there, there's a couple of things that are a little bit different from last year. One is both experts today said that there's actually overall more fuel, more vegetation that's grown that could dry out and then potentially catch fire. But again, beetle kill is going to be an issue this year. And Weber, who you heard from, uh, actually pointed out a couple of specific spots around the state, including along the I-70 corridor, as well as Birthed Pass, just a couple of spots that he thinks could become problematic with these wildfires. All right, Anusha, thank you very much.